Let's finish our discussion of the First World War by looking at some of the general long-lasting effects that would last in the decades of the 20s and 30s and eventually begin the Second World War, which broke out in 1939. I want to address the first issue of political instability. We've already mentioned that there were new countries that were created as a result of territories lost by the losing powers of the Central Powers. There were a total of nine new countries created, if you count Austria-Hungary being split up as new nations. These new nations, obviously with being new, faced a lot of instability. They had to get their government settled, their economy started, and that would take time and effort. And given all of the instability and disagreements following the treaties, it would be hard for these nations to do so. Also, there was a, a general fear across Europe and in the United States over the role of the new communist Russia. There was a lot of concern over whether revolutions would take place in other countries as well. I would mentioned previously that in America, this was known as the Red Scare. And so we were on the lookout for those who we considered subsur subversives that might try to encourage revolution in our country and overthrow our government to a socialist one. Because of this fear of communist Russian strength, they were not invited to attend the conference where the Treaty of Versailles was created, and they were not a member of the League of Nations until 1934. So you can definitely see that there was hostility towards the Russians uh, because of their communist government, but also because of the bitterness at them leaving the efforts of World War I and leaving the Allies hanging. This exclusion of the Russians would contribute to feelings of hostility among some of the new communist leaders, such as Vladimir Lenin and later Joseph Stalin, who would regard the, the Western allied countries in the United States with extreme suspicion and distrust, which would make it difficult for us to cooperate during the Second World War. Not only was there issues with the communists, but also in Europe itself, there were groups divided over the role of the treaties being played out. Not only was it just the victors of the war versus those that had been defeated and the disagreements between those countries, but also there were disagreements over how to maintain the peace settlements versus the idea of completely revising the peace settlements. Different groups that had different opinions on what should be done with the treaties led to the formation of blocks or groups of countries that had similar ideas, sort of similar to the whole alliance philosophy from before World War One. If you look at the sidebar on page 85 at the top, there's um, some information about one of these blocks called the Little Intan, which was between the countries of Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, and Romania. And it says that France supported the alliance by signing treaties with each member country. The whole goal of this little block of countries was because they had similar opinions on what to do with the Treaty of Versailles. Countries such as the members of the Little Entente's key aim was to prevent any kind of revision of the Versailles Treaty by countries that it affected, obviously Germany, but also people that had been affected by the other settlements such as Hungary. So you can definitely say that there were some issues caused by the fact that these treaties were so controversial. Additionally, another political effect lasting into the decades of the 20s and 30s was the fact that the focus of power was now shifting away from Europe. Because the United States emerged as a much stronger country than the British and the French, the United States was seen as kind of a, a leader among the world stage now. We know that Wilson wanted to promote that philosophy with his 14 points. Even though those weren't completely incorporated into the treaties, the United States was seen as the leading power in the world, and Britain and France were going to have a difficult time acting on their own in international disputes because the U.S. was seen as this leader, even though our country wasn't a member of the League of Nations. Because of this shift of power away from Europe, colonies that had been controlled by the British and French were encouraged to begin movements for their own independence because they knew that Britain and France were no longer holding the key titles of uh, top countries in the world anymore or the ones that had the most power, and that encouraged them to, to rise up, basically. Next, an obvious effect of World War I would be the fact that the German people were extremely upset with the Treaty of Versailles. We've already looked at the criticisms of the treaty, including that it would prevent any type of economic recovery. Um, it basically destroyed their military and left them no opportunity to defend themselves in the future. And so the German people would be supportive of any type of strong government that could promise the people that the treaty would be revised or even thrown out. This is something that Adolf Hitler used to his advantage in getting the people of Germany to support his philosophy and efforts.
prior to the outbreak of World War II. We've also discussed the Italians. They walked out of the negotiations to make the Treaty of Versailles because they did not feel like they were getting what they had been promised when they joined the Allies. This led to some bad feelings among the Italian people and was something that Mussolini used in, to his advantage in accomplishing his goals and leaning more towards the Axis powers at the beginning of World War II as opposed to the Allies. Obviously, we know that one huge effect of the war was economic burdens that were placed on European countries. You can see on page 85 of your book, the section marked economic issues, details especially what happened with Germany, but also the different social classes of Europe in general. All social classes had to deal with the issues of rising prices, inflation, and the loss of stable currency, which were effects of the immediate results of World War I being the loss of infrastructure, and that definitely hindered countries' ability to trade. We know that the dis destruction of factories and villages and roads made it very difficult for the countries to recover economically, even the allied countries. So these were problems that were faced across Europe and eventually reached their way into the United States. In addition, these new countries in Eastern and Southern Europe were especially fragile economically. They had been split apart and made into new countries, and because of this, this would be hard for them to establish trade. It look, if you look on page 85, in the second paragraph under the economic issues section, it says that Eastern and Southeastern Europe, the fragmentation of the area, hindered economic recovery. There was now serious disruption in what had been a free trade area of some 50 million inhabitants. So as these countries tried to build up their economy, they competed with each other, and that led to inabilities to maintain or even establish any type of solid financial foundation. With these countries across Europe uh, trying to recover themselves individually, they were operating more on a com competitive mindset with their economies. And so implementing things like tariffs basically hindered trade rather than helped countries to recover. In addition to all these problems, when the Great Depression hit beginning in the United States, it was adding insult to injury, basically. This pretty much wrecked the world's ability to make any type of lasting significant economic recovery. The decade of the 1930s would prove to be one of the most economically devastating decades across the world ever. Finally, the last major strand of effects from World War I would be social effects. Traditional structures of society had been swept away with World War I. As you can see here, landed aristocracies across many European countries lost power because of the war. And so now, basically, it was a grab for who could regain those titles of being the leading classes across these European countries. Many countries, especially those in Central and Southern Europe, implemented socialist types of reform, such as land redistribution, which you can see at the bottom of page 85. Additionally, trade unions were improved because the fact that they reflected socialist ideals as well. The idea of bargaining and promoting the rights of workers at the hands of their owners and bosses was something that was running rampant after World War I. The key ideas of improving pay and conditions uh, can be seen across Europe, and you can see examples from specific countries like Britain and France at the bottom of page 85 and top of 86 with specific laws and other types of acts that were put into place. You can see the status of women was on the rise in many countries. M many women had contributed to war efforts across the different countries that were involved in World War I, and so as a result, they were able to improve their status in society and their struggle for equality. In the United States, in 1920, women received the right to vote, finally. Not only with political gains, but there were also social changes for women as well because they were receiving a greater status and equality. You can see on page 86 that clothing styles change. Um, what was considered unacceptable behavior before was now considered acceptable. And that was something that would fuel the fires of the women's rights movement that took place in the United States and in other countries later on in the decade of the 1960s. New employment opportunities was, were given to women across many countries as well, as for the first time occupations were opened up to them that had previously been closed. Finally, the last major general effect of the, the First World War is the idea that with the League of Nations, it was the groundwork that would eventually establish the United Nations. 
The League of Nations ultimately failed and dissolved prior to the outbreak of World War II and was very ineffective at maintaining the international peace. However, the ideals of it were, would be important in the structuring of the United Nations at the conclusion of World War II. So basically, the general effects of World War II were negative and led to the outbreak of World War II. 